an $11,000 childcare bill. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look at this article. Well, just discussing a huge childcare bill someone has received. Now remember, remember when inflation actually was down because everyone was getting their free childcare. <laughs> remember that? Well, Nothing's free, everyone. The piper will come calling one way or another. But let's have a look at this family because you know, just receiving a random bill from the government for something that you thought were free, that they said you're entitled to, yeah, I can, I can see how this could shock and devastate people. You know, boom, there goes your emergency fund. Uh, so Centrelink bills, Sydney families, thousands over childcare subsidy during the COVID lockdown. Rebecca Carlson was shocked when she was sent two bills just weeks, weeks apart from Centrelink demanding she pay back more than $11,000 in childcare subsidies. This is the thing, guys. This whole childcare with the state subsidizing it for people, it is expensive. It's such a scheme. We've seen all the people trying to, you know, rorting it. Remember down in Sydney, all these different different people running these childcare schemes where no children were going to just to get the money? The mum of one won. $11,000 in childcare subsidies, that much. For one kid. Wow. That's insane. That is insane. Received a bill for 7665 for the financial period of 2018 to 2019 which is due on September 2022, with the letter stating that a review of her circumstances had uncovered that she had been paid too much in childcare subsidies. You know, that's our efficient, well-organized government there. Another bill arrived less than two weeks later, this time for the 2019-20 financial year for an amount of $3,743, which needed to be paid by September 24th. Back then, the 42-year-old's daughter was attending childcare three days a week and was looked after a nanny twice a week while she worked as a sales director, but things have since dramatically changed. I was made redundant in June last year, so my financial circumstances have also changed compared to what they were three years ago. So to receive these invoices is quite a slap in the face, she told news.com.au. That's two months to pay a large amount of money. Yeah, you think... You think Centrelink could give you a bit more time, wouldn't they? They dox it from your your payments that you receive. How how does it work here, guys? But I mean, here you go. There's this is the thing. They they want they want to encourage women to work because they want to get the tax dollars. That's what it is. Since being made redundant, she's picked up contract work where possible, but is averaging around ten hours a week as she looks after her child before and after school while her husband continues his job as a sales manager. We've pretty much, we've, we've lost pretty much one full income, which was my salary, and then we have been hit with these bills, and I don't know if another one is coming, she said. Well, this is the thing. If they were earning so much money, did they need this childcare subsidy? How many people are getting it? Everyone. It's just nuts. And they're going, oh, well, it's not worth women working then if they don't get the childcare subsidy. That's the argument that they make. Well, maybe need to people need to take care of their own kid. Okay? But Florida, children don't get socialized in this. They're in childcare. This is utter, utter bullshit. I mean, come on. Parents kind of you know, get together. They have play dates. They organize things. You don't need childcare to socialize your children. You don't need all the state-based indoctrination in their early childhood education. You can do that yourself, guys. You know, here's a tip. You don't need a degree to teach a, teach a toddler things. I don't just have a bank account to find 11 grand in eight weeks. I'm homeschooling, and there was already financial pressure, and that's one more pressure we don't need right now. I mean, this is a terrible time to be receiving this. Bills could also mean a huge blow, blow to a personal dream, she revealed. I've been going through IVF. IVF. Oh, no. She, how old is she? How old is she? Does it say 42? There you 
go. I've been going through IVF, and that's the last potential cycle we could go through. So that's another kick in the guts, knowing if we have to pay that bill, we miss out on going through another round of IVF, she said. The North Beach's mum said they'd always used an accountant to do their tax affairs, so found the bills unusual. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the accountants. They're meant to, you know, help sort all this mess out. It just shows you how complicated this bureaucratic BS is. It really does. When she initially received the invoices, she said she put her head in the sand as she didn't have the mental capacity to deal with it while enduring Sydney's tough lockdown. Then she had just going to pay up before discovering she's not the only one impacted. Just going to pay up. Talk to your accountant. Ring them up and say, why the hell am I getting this bill? Give it to them and say, you fix it. Okay, you don't just pay up. You make it the professional's problem that you paid for their services. Although, if you're using a 67 buck one in the shopping center, could that work? As Facebook post on Northern Beaches Mums Group on the weekend blew up, attracting hundreds of comments from worried parents who had been slugged with bills dating years back. Mother of two, Nandine Kliski, put up the original Facebook post after she received an invoice from Centrelink for two and a half grand and 1200 for the 2019 20 financial years for overpayment of childcare subsidies with both due in September. So how does it work, guys? Do they receive the childcare subsidies as compensation for putting the kids in childcare? We need to open this market. It's so regulated, so regulated. There's such government involvement, and they all play on the, oh, kids need to be safe, this type of thing. It's the whole emotional aspect of it. You can't even run a childcare from home anymore unless you jump through 50 million hoops. Back then, she was sending both her kids to childcare during that period for four days a week. She recently spoke to Centrelink, who told her they held back the 1819 bills due to the pandemic. Oh, wasn't that nice of them? Wasn't that nice of them? I mean, this is, we looked at childcare when we had our little office there, and we thought, you know, I remember going in there with Rachel to have a look at it. There's literally one in the complex we were in, in the little shopping center complex, like 20 meters away. And I remember just walking in there and just the atmosphere, all the, the, the propaganda that was plastered all up on the walls. And I'm going, what, why do I want to pay these strangers to look after my own kid? We brought our child to, to work every day because it was our business and our right to do that. So one question I have is that we are still dealing with coronavirus and we are arguably in a worse lockdown now in Sydney. So why send a double whammy now, she said. <laughs> because it's a bureaucracy. They don't think like that. You're probably lucky they even managed to hold off on the bills. Another question is, uh, another question I have is whether is it's accurate there was a system issue producing inaccurate invoices years a few years ago. Looking at the other mums in the groups, it's a tough time at the moment, and other parents are receiving bills for sixteen to 17000 Wow, for a system we've already paid much more money than other countries do for childcare. It just seems unfair. Well, it's because the government is highly regulating the childcare, and they're subsidizing it. That's, that's why it's so expensive, everyone. Do people not get this? It makes, this is the thing, maybe it's not even worth then jumping through childcare when you look at your pay. Taxes, everything, all the inconvenience. It makes me nervous about my next tax return. I've just, I've just gone in and increased my income by quite a bit and I got a message back that my rebate hasn't changed yet. They're telling me it is wrong the past two tax years and I have to pay back money. Well, so you're not going to trust and put money aside then. Once you start to chat with a few people on the Facebook group, it's good for a start to see you're not the only one, but also raises more questions about, is this correct? The virtual assistant said since Sydney went into lockdown over a month ago, she has been financially hit, losing 30 hours a week of work, while her, while her electrician husband was also off work for two weeks as stricter restrictions were imposed. I have to claim money for the disaster payment, so Centrelink are giving me money in one hand and pulling it back out with... The, with these childcare subsidy bills, she added. Welcome to Australia. Welcome to socialism, comrade. <laughs> Welcome to government involved in paying people to send kids to childcare. The 41-year-old is waiting for a callback from a Centrelink subject matter expert in the next two weeks, but she's ready to fight. 
I'm not paying until someone can tell me this is accurate. I'm going to have to, to go on a payment plan to pay it back as I'm claiming disaster payments for loss of work, so I can't chuck out three and a half grand. Yulia has been hit by a whopping bill three times for a payment dating back to 2017-18, totaling $5,500. Like Nadine, she recently claimed a disaster payment after being stood down from her job as a chief commercial officer two days a week. What type of... What are these jobs? Chief commercial officer? What, what are they? What do these people do? You know, just sales rep? Managing sales rep? You know, Sparky, I know. Jippy, I know. <laughs> Architect, I know. Engineer, I know what they do. Chief commercial officer? Is that a C-level position for two days? A week? How can you do a C-level position for two days a week? That, 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 I guess you can. You can sit on a board one day a month. So, yet just two days after her disaster claim, she received her first bill from Centrelink, which left her shaking. On July 20, she was slugged with a bill for uh, 1819 of 2195 and then a week later another one arrived with 2256 with both due for fine for payment in September but it didn't stop there and when she received another message just the next day there was an email waiting in her mygov account she said the blood drained from her the third blow left her devastated with a bill of $1120 for 81718 with the requirement she cough up the money in just one month i could not believe it and I thought it was because I had lodged something for a disaster payment and I put myself on the radar and then I hoped to be on the Northern Beaches Mums Facebook or happened to be on the Northern Beaches Mums Facebook group and there are more than 100 comments on it. So maybe this is people who are a little bit more affluent and, and shouldn't need these subsidies. Are these means tested, these childcare subsidies, everyone? Maybe they should be. Maybe this is what we're starting to see. I think it's so unfair. I lodge my tax return every single year. I pay an exorbitant amount of tax every year. And then to receive this, it's terrible for me and my family, especially at this time. Yeah, so it's all, it's, it's, it's all bullshit, really, isn't it? They take from one hand and give it to the other so you feel like you're getting money back. I've lost two days a, work, uh, a week work, which is significant for my family as we require every single dollar that comes into the household. And it's particularly difficult as well as the childcare subsidies, the one for, from last year. We, keep, we kept our children home during the lockdown. I didn't send our kid children to daycare. While the bills don't sp specify which child the subsidy relates to, Yulia said her two children went to daycare three days a week between 18 and 2020. Only two days, 17, 18, and her daughter started a, starting at nine months old. And her son at six months, so young, putting their kids in childcare. Raise your own bloody kids. Come on. It's more important than your career, than some stranger raising them, and then you get all the government involved in this. I think it's, it's. I mean, this is it. I mean, this is where we're heading now. You know, people have kids, and then they put them in the, in the, in the bloody system from so young. And because people are all in this trap, you need both people working. Look at them. They've got two people working in the household, and they're struggling or franting over a couple of grand, you know, five grand, ten grand, they can't come up with that. How close to the edge are these people? How many of these people that are living, you know, these nice lives in the northern beaches with the car, the kids, the home, mortgage to the hilt, right at the edge, it's all bullshit. If you can't come up with ten grand in a month. I think that's a sign right there. Everyone, come on. We're talking about people that can't come up with two grand or $500. I think it's absolutely crazy. My husband runs his own business and I'm the manager of a large organization and to be hit with an invoice for three years ago, which is basically like, I'm sorry, you forgot to pay this or we accidentally didn't charge you and you have to pay it now. It wouldn't stump up, stand up in the business world. It's not right. Probably would. You're going to take into court. 35-year-old says she needs to reach out to Centrelink but hasn't had the time as she is homeschooling and isn't looking forward to spending four hours on the phone while trying to talk to someone. Yeah, you just you know, put it in your ear and hold. She added she's always filed her tax returns with an accountant each year. What, what does that mean? We're all using our savings at the moment to survive and pay our mortgage 
and electricity and all that kind of stuff and not to be paying childcare subsidy payments from years ago. Services Australia General Manager Hank Jorgen said they know many people are still doing it tough and the organisation is sensitive to the challenging circumstances people face, including those impacted by the current lockdowns. After the end of the financial year, we balanced family payments, including childcare subsidies, to make sure we're paying families the right amount. This process occurs when families lodge their tax return or otherwise confirm their income, he said. Families have two years to confirm their income. This is why some of these overpayments date back to years ago. They have not done this within two years. A debt may be raised. Oh, there you go. I mean, this is the thing with the, the family tax benefit. You can, you know, you receive income for your kids and you've got to project what you're going to earn over the year. And some people stuff it up completely and then get a bill and then complain that they get a bill at the end. When we balance payments, there are three possible outcomes. Top up, no charge, or an overpayment. The overwhelming majority of families have a top up or no charge when their balance is completed. Families have two years after each financial year to confirm income for that financial year or they will be sent an account payable notice, he added. We have recently reached two years since the 18-19 financial year ended and as and have sent letters to families who still haven't confirmed their income, he explained. See, this is the thing. You know what I bet you is happening. They're doing it with the accountant, but the accountant isn't going in and updating their MyGov statement. I bet you it's, I bet you it's some bullshit like that. It goes from one, one government department it's not feeding through to the other. Can you see that happening? Not now, super efficient government here in Australia. <laughs> I, I just hate... What really irks me, guys, is filling out the same information for different departments of the government, the exact same stuff. And I go, well, come on, you meant to monitor everything I do. What, you're doing it wrong. Even though the deadline has passed, it's not too late for families to take action for us to reassess their debts. Last year, Services Australia paused a range of debt raising and recovery activity nationally. We restarted debt activity late last year because we understand that telling people if they've been overpaid helps them helps give them certainty about their situation and allows them to plan for the future. Yeah, the people with a Centrelink debt who are experiencing financial hardship can contact Services Australia on such and such to arrange flexible repayments to suit their situation. One mum commented in the Facebook group that her friend had checked her child care subsidy letter against the ATO notice of assessment. The income figures don't match what our taxable income is on our NOA, she wrote. The CSES letter implies... We made more than we were assessed. Another mum commented that her income for the childcare subsidy was 60000 above what she declared in her tax return. Well, then you get it sorted. While one shared that she had received a bill for $2,600 from 1920 financial year, but is likely right due to her husband owing money on shares, on, on share grants and their tax agent holding off submitting until May. Well, okay, so you made more money. Then you got to pay it back, everyone. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm not a fan of paying taxes, but you got to work the system legitimately. Why aren't these people just buying five investment properties and negative gearing them, paying cash only, uh, interest only, then offsetting that on the other income? Not financial advice. That's a meme, but that's what people do in this country to get out of paying tax. Shit, I wish it wasn't a meme. I, I, I wish it wasn't real. I just keep think, thinking back to that teacher who thought the only way they could get ahead was buying five houses. And then, then went, on the, went on the ABC and was bitching and moaning that uh, you know, they're doing it tough. You wouldn't be going on the ABC bragging about doing it well, would you? No, you'd be selling a course on Facebook. That's how it works. What is totally not okay, in my opinion, is sending someone a bill for eighteen nineteen when those people submitted their tax returns on time, especially a bill that doesn't give much time for payment is due with barely any breakdown of how they came to the calculation, she commented. Meanwhile, Miss Kleski, whose youngest still has another 18 months to go in childcare, describes the childcare rebate system as flawed and complicated to navigate. We do pay an extra- extraordinary, ex- extraordinary amount for childcare compared to what other countries pay. Yeah, because the government subsidizes the shit out of it. That's why you pay for it. They regulate it significantly here in this country. That's why... Okay, you can't have mothers bitching and moaning about paying too much for childcare, then also demanding that it's subsidized, then expecting all the, these requirements. They're the first ones to go up in arms and complain about things. 
I've seen it. Look at the building code now. Where you can't open on a second story building, you can't open a window more than 100 millimeters because it could be a bedroom. A child might fall out. That came from research from a bunch of nurses in hospitals. It means you have, you're having to hold out for ch- children to go to school to pay for certain things. As we're paying 15 to 20. What? In childcare, you could do a lot with that. Uh, come on. Seriously. Anyway, there you go, guys. Another reminder why I'm very happy we've avoided this entire mess with childcare. We pretty much have a childcare in our house with all our children. And, you know, everyone thinks, uh, what is it? Everyone thinks the homeschooling kids aren't socialized. Now, our eldest has, has been invited to another birthday party, another thing. The, the, the families just come together and socialize like that. You know, everyone overcompensates because they're afraid they're going to wind up on on you know 60 minutes with crazy people in the family anyway what do you think about this one everyone what's the solution well real simple this is what happens when the government highly regulates a sector is it going to be possible to get the government out of the childcare sector in australia not in your life i can't see it ever happening i can't see there being enough will I, I, we're just too much of a bloody nanny state in this country but there you go guys you got to suck your apples if you, if you want a highly regulated subsidized sector sometimes you got to cop it because it's going to be the bureaucrats that are controlling it. Well, welcome to Australia, comrades. Take care, guys. <laughs> uh, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. One thing I would like would be that childcare could be offered by any business, you know, even gym membership, all these little perks without fringe benefit tax. You know, maybe your business could hire a nanny. So you could have your kid at work, and they could take them to the park and come back at lunch, and you could see them. Wouldn't that be interesting? Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. If you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.